What's up painting friends? It's Stoof here. Welcome back to my channel. Last week you saw me do this plain air painting in Ohio Pile State Park. I worked on this for about 40 minutes in plain air, meaning I painted directly what I saw in front of me. This is me working on a painting of the Yakagani River. I then come back to my studio and start to add some more detail. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel. All right, here I'm gonna talk about what paint colors I used, and then we're gonna go into my studio painting process. Uh, my palette here, we have some magenta, flesh tint, burnt umber, uh, some yellow ochre, titanium white, ivory black, a little bit of um, light cobalt blue, uh, some burnt sienna, a little bit of like a medium brown, it's like a, a fleshy brown. Uh, this one is like a dark earthy green. This one is my um, Thalo Viridian. This one is sap green. This one's olive green. This one here is green gold. We also have dioxazine purple and ultramarine blue. Uh, lots of these colors in the shadows. And then in the highlights, we have more of like the greenish gold. Um, a little bit of like light grayish purpley greens in here as well and then some white for the really super bright highlights so uh, i'm going to start adding detail to this painting and we're going to start speeding up the footage because it's going to be repetitive uh, but just wanted to show you guys my process so thanks for watching so in the studio after i got all of those paints on my palette i started working with the details in the background i wanted to make those rocks in the background a little less warm uh, they turned out a little bit warmer in my uh, plain air painting than I perceived them in real life. Uh, I think I was just mixing a little too much uh, flush tints, a little bit too much warm pinks in there. So I wanted to cool those down a little uh, and just give the painting an overall cooler feel. Uh, most of the colors I'm using here are on the cooler side other than that green gold and my flush tint. Everything else in there is pretty much a cool color. So just starting by eyeing up my reference photo, uh, I'm still keeping in mind the colors that I saw in plein air, uh, the purples and the greens and the blues and the water that don't quite show up as well in the photograph. Uh, that's what I tried to really bring out in this studio painting, uh, even though you couldn't notice it very well in my reference photo. I knew it was there, so I started adding more colors than I was seeing in my reference photo to help uh, give this painting a little bit more depth and make it a little bit more exciting. So just working my way from the background to the foreground. Here I'm using a number four flat tip brush. Uh, it's a synthetic brush. I really like this one. I use this for the entire painting actually. I tried not to go too detailed with a liner brush here even. I, I wanted to keep this a little bit more expressive. I love painting water. Like it's so relaxing for me to paint water because you can just let the brush kind of scribble around the canvas the entire time and you don't have to do any forced perfect straight lines. Uh, I've been doing a lot of commissions and wedding portraits with architecture in them and it is driving me crazy and this was the escape I needed from that because <laughs> painting straight lines is really hard. Uh, so I really enjoy painting water like this where I could just have a free movement with the brush strokes. So if you're struggling um, with, you know, trying to make things a little too perfect with the painting, maybe take a break and try painting some water for a little bit where you don't have to make it too perfect. You can just scribble around the paint and it'll still come out nicely. Basically our light source is to the left. So the cascading water is our highlight there. It's really bright. Um, we have some pure white in there, just a little bit. Uh, in general, I'm mixing a little bit of ultramarine blue, maybe a little bit of umber, uh, a little bit of purples, uh, making, making like my own little bit of earthy browns, cooler browns mixed in with the white to try to prevent from using too much pure bright white because I don't want it to look flat. Uh, you want to save that pure bright white for just your super bright highlights or like a part of the painting where you really want to draw attention to something. Uh, and that is like the cascading part of the water and then the uh, white water at the bottom of the cascades where the water's just like churning under that waterfall. 
In the background here, you can see I'm starting to add little subtle hints with more green in there, a little bit more browns. Now here in the foreground, I'm starting to add a little bit more blues and purples. Just trying to keep that beautiful range of color that I was seeing in person. Working on more of like the shadowy parts in the foreground there. And then jumping around a bit more, going back to the waterfall, starting to add some of those pure bright white highlights I was talking about a little bit ago. I'm pressing more gently with the brush at the top of the waterfall cascade, uh, and then pressing a little bit more firmly with the brush at the bottom of the cascade, trying to get the paint to like really lay on thick at the bottom part of the waterfall and have it kind of transition almost like smoothly. Uh, and not have like a solid sharp line at the top of the waterfall. Taking the brush, holding it at different angles to push around those little highlights there at the bottom of the cascade. Uh, if you have a reference photo you're looking at, try to make sense of which shapes the ripples and the um, little bubbling water is making. Um, I was noticing that it's making like wavy U shapes basically, so I was trying to keep that pattern going uh, with what I saw in my reference photo for where I'm putting shadows and where I'm putting these highlights right now. You can see it's kind of like a U shape. Really laying those highlights on thick in the lower foreground there. That's where we have the most white water, uh, like churning water there. And we do have some shadows on this churning bubbly water. So I'm using a little bit of ultramarine blue with white uh, and a hint of uh, ivory black for the right side of my little bubbles at the bottom, just to help build up depth with those bubbles. And as we're going back to working with the water above the cascades, you can see I added some blue, purples, greens in there. there the blue is where the sky is reflecting off the water, so that you could see a little in the reference photo. Uh, I started adding some olive green in there, that really deep, dark green. Uh, to build more depth here. Uh, you can tell that maybe there's a shadow from another rock underwater. That might be a spot where we have more of that olive green color. And then we might have a little bit of our green gold uh, with like a lighter phthalo blue in sections where it's more shallow. A little bit more light reflecting there. Maybe hints of umber and hints of ochre in areas that are shallow as well. You can start to see a little bit of the warmth of the rock. Maybe the sun's hitting the rock and you can see a little bit more warmth in there. So you really do have a, a lot of color in the water here. Now I'm working on that background again, uh, trying to bring the value up a little bit, trying to make those shadows not be quite so dark, helping to push those farther into the distance. That's another thing your photo might not give you. Uh, my photo had a much deeper shadow in the far background uh, where in real life we wouldn't perceive that to be so dark. Helps to build depth in your painting and uh, like a sense of distance if you make your shadows and your contrast a little less extreme in the background. And finally, the last step is just to let your eye kind of go over the entire painting again and see what needs to be brightened up, maybe what section needs to be darkened down a little bit. If your eye is immediately drawn to one area that isn't quite your focal point, maybe you need to do something there. Uh, maybe take a step away, grab a drink, and then come back and look at it, see if anything jumps out at you immediately there. I did do this after the painting and made a couple more minor adjustments at the end uh, off camera 
but this painting is complete now and I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out. Like I said, this was like the perfect escape that I needed from all of the commissions I've been working on that have a lot of very uh, stiff straight lines. So it was nice to just let the brush scribble around on canvas, still feel like I'm accomplishing something. Uh, this was very much needed. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. If you have any more questions related to this painting tutorial, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. And as always, if you have recommendations for future painting tutorials, I have a list of things to paint that I get to over time. So hopefully I'll get to uh, all of your painting requests at some point. Again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I post videos every Thursday night. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.